and vigour, an exciting speech from the man in charge of managing New Zealand's economy, a man who was uh, determined to see step change in the New Zealand economy, and so he delivered the speech with uh, a real rigour and vigour that I'm sure will have had people uh, absolutely on the edge of their seat as they listen to the importance uh, this government says that it places uh, on infrastructure. Uh, sir, I want to uh, pick up from what the Minister for Infrastructure uh, said, uh, that uh, the Labor opposition will be supporting the Utilities Access Bill, third reading, uh, the Infrastructure Bill, uh, the New Zealand Railways Corporation Amendment Bill, the, uh, the third reading of those two bills, but we will be opposing the third reading of the Affordable Housing Enabling Territorial Authorities Act repeal bill. And so we uh, certainly give notice of that. We're in, we're in opposition to that, uh, that fourth bill, and we, we'd uh, like the, uh, the uh, division uh, to be put separately so we could uh, uh, give our support to the government on the first three bills and uh, vote against the fourth uh, bill at the appropriate time when uh, you, uh, you um, uh, put the question before the committee. Uh, sir, this government uh, uh, is a government without a plan, uh, and we see the lack of commitment to actually doing things as against the slogans and the rhetoric, the, uh, the great uplifting speeches that take place before an election uh, compared to the more difficult work of running a country uh, once the rubber hits the road. And we, we were told uh, that infrastructure was so critical uh, to the future of the country, and Labor agrees with that, uh, but we were told it was so critical that National would have a real focus on it. And uh, uh, that's why, sir, it is, it is enormously um, surprising to me that 22 months after the last general ele election, we finally have the night we're going to have the third reading of an infrastructure bill. This was such a critical part of the government's step change for their economic program. Uh, when they, what did they make the Governor General say during the speech from the throne? They, they were going to turbocharge <laughs> the New Zealand economy uh, before the eager new backbenchers found out there actually was no plan to do that. There was only ever one plan. The one plan was to make John Key the Prime Minister. And that involves saying anything. It involves saying things like, we will close the wage gap with Australia, we will have no cuts to frontline services, things that we see every day are not happening in, in New Zealand. Oh, we won't increase GST. Uh, all these things that were going to take place uh, in our country uh, that uh, you know, no one had anything to fear from this nice Mr Key as he bounced and the words of the Minister for Infrastructure uh, from clad to clad. I think is how he says it. Um, uh, we, we, we had nothing to fear from uh, this government, but it turns out there is no plan, and nowhere is that more obvious than in the fact that the infrastructure bill has languished uh, right through the term of this parliament. Sorry, Sir Roger. Um, we're coming to that. We're coming. Just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Just, 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 just. I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what, send a, send a text message to your nurse and t tell the member's nurse not to come and, uh, come and collect them straight away. Uh, if he just stays for a few minutes longer, he'll be able to hear uh, what the Labour's plan is. But, uh, but I, see, I, I, I see that the uh, mobile van is ready to take him back to Malvina Major Retirement Village here in Wellington. And uh, we wish the honourable member uh, well for the night uh, as, as, uh, as he goes off. Uh, for, for his cocoa. But, uh, sir, uh, can, can I simply say that 22 months after the general election, Mr English, that uh, great workhorse, the man who thinks he's the Bill Birch of the national government, that's, that's, I mean, if I compare his ambitions for New Zealand, if I compare his ambitions for New Zealand today compared to what they were 20 years ago when he came in this place, where he assumed the Prime Ministership was his for the taking, Hence the bitter speech on the third reading after question time today, a very incisive and revealing speech about what drives Mr English. And whenever he's asked to speak about the government and speak about politics, the things that come to his mind first and foremost were revealed uh, in that particular speech. And I, I enjoy them. I, I enjoy his speeches because they are an open window uh, into his heart on these matters. Uh, but, sir, even 22 months after the election, we get the third reading, it's a year since the first reading of this legislation. If infrastructure was so important uh, to the government, and they said this legislation was necessary, in fact, Mr English congratulated himself at the end of his speech he's just given by saying, we're not like the last government, we don't believe that regulation is the answer, legislation uh, is the answer, we're going to run a tight ship on this, the, the bills we bring in are going to be absolutely necessary. If you accept National's narrative on this, and I certainly don't, but say, you, say you're a generous person and you do accept it, even on that measure, Mr English has failed uh, with the legislation because he's taken just so long uh, to do it, sir. And I think that has been a, a, a re-emphasis uh, of the fact that the National Party said they were going to deliver a brighter future to New Zealand, they said they were going to be ambitious for New Zealand, but the truth is when the rubber hits the road, this is not a government with a plan to turn any of the rhetoric or slogans into daily real reality 
and the lives of ordinary Kiwis in our country. There's no connection between the operationalising of government policy and the soaring, well, not really soaring, because I, I realise for the Prime Minister uh, sometimes it seems like English is a second language, but, 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 but I know that uh, the, the slogans that have been so tested so thoroughly by Crosby Texter aren't always the ones that, uh, that turn up uh, on the floor of the House uh, as, as policy. Sir, uh, I, I contrast that uh, with the uh, record of the, of the previous government that did make a serious commitment to infrastructure. Now, I, I know the government pays, a, uh, it pays itself a huge amount of credit uh, for its roading budget, but they need to recall the fact that in 1999, when the National Party left office, does, does uh, Mr Bennett know how much they were spending every year on the State Highway Programme? No, I'm talking about the 1999 government. That was the National Party. So, so I'm, I'm sorry to um, shock the member, but in our country, in 1999, the National Party led the government. And I'm asking that member, as a member of that party, although not of the government of the time, uh, what was the uh, annual spending on state highways? Oh, he has no idea. OK, that's all right. That's all right. Every, every now and again, I have hope that David Bennett is going to live up to the great promise he has uh, in himself. But uh, we'll, 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 I'll, ask, I'll, I'll wait till next year. I'll try again uh, next year. But the National Party spent $850 million a year uh, on, uh, on roading in 1999. And by the time Labor left government, that had over doubled to $1.9 billion a year. So there's been a massive increase in road spending from 1999, when D David Carter first left the ministry. He's still here. Exhausted. Exhausted after 12 months as the Associate Minister of Food, Fibre, Biosecurity and Border Patrol, or whatever the, whatever the uh, Jenny Shipley PC portfolio name was. I mean, how embarrassing to have that on your business card, but he did, he did. And, um, and so he left off, he had nine years sabbatical, and this, what we see from David Carter now, is the rested, refreshed, re energised, uplifted version. This is, imagine if he hadn't had those nine years in government and opposition to relax before the work, work effort uh, that he puts in today. But we saw a doubling of the road budget during the years uh, of the Labour government. We were very much committed uh, to that because the truth is New Zealand's infrastructure was about to fall over back in those days. Auckland was totally roadblocked, uh, gridlocked. You know, I see Stephen Joyce, who uh, uh, you know, has great tickets on himself, but, but, but I see him get up at Parliament all the time and uh, pay tribute to the National Party for you know, some road opening six months ahead of time or something or other, as though this is some absolute miracle. Often you get the Corpy Bridge announced for, for the fifth or sixth time. But it's, uh, actually, the length, of, the, length of paper, the length of paper associated with the press releases almost cover the entire bridge by now. Um, uh, but, but, but the reality is, uh, is that these, these are projects that were started uh, by the previous uh, Labour government. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because I tell you what, the, he says you're right. Oh, well, when was Victoria Park started? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. When? Oh, the Southern Motorway. I'm very happy to talk about the Southern Motorway. The so no, the Southern Motorway is a great, great example. Great example of, of how the Labour Party uh, had those uh, roads in, in order and ready to go. Out of the... Out, out of the seven roads... Out of the seven roads of national significance that the National Party say they're so proud of, six of them were Labour Party projects. The only one that was not a Labour Party project was the Pooi to Wellsford Holiday Highway, where they're right to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars looking after oh, all talk. You know, ask David Carter this. How many roads were open in the early part of the Labour government's term where all the credit belonged to the National Party? Zero, none, zip, zilch, not a single road. Not one. Morris Williamson. And, you know, I know that new National Party members are critical of Morris Williamson. They say, what does he really do? Morris Williamson is hyperactive today compared to when he was Minister of Transport in the 1990s. Nothing ever happened when Morris Williamson was Minister of Transport uh, in New Zealand. So our criticism of this bill uh, goes around the affordable housing uh, bill, and Moana Mackey will go over that in great big detail. Uh, but, but, sir, I want to say, I want to close by saying the big disappointment for Labour in this bill is rail. This government couldn't be any less committed to rail uh, than what it is. And in fact, we see many different examples of their lack of commitment to rail. Uh, uh, where, where they've really got, as my colleague, the Honourable David W. Parker, would say, they've gone off the tracks uh, when it comes to, uh, to almost a, a David Letterman uh, line that you think John Key would use uh, during question time. I guess we'll have to wait till we're back from Vanuatu for that. Uh, but, sir, on rail, this is a government of limited vision. 
all around the world as countries confront moving passengers and metro centres and moving freight uh, across our, our country. They're using more and more rail. This, this government is not committed to doing that. The next speaker is David Bennett, who in opposition was in favour of a passenger service from Hamilton to Auckland. Now he's in government. He's got 101 reasons why it shouldn't happen. Let me give him a little hint. It ain't going to take him to the Cabinet, so he might as well stick up for his constituents <laughs> and make sure that the promise he gave for rail happens. This infrastructure bill doesn't do enough for rail. 